That's the sound of the Australian bush. And you'll hear them everywhere. A laughing kookaburra. Queensland backyard bugs and birds. The laughing kookaburra makes its nest in termite mounds and hollow trees. I've been following these ones in a termite nest. They actually took over from the kingfishers last year. So come with me and have a look at this. Laughing kookaburras are the largest of the kingfisher family. They have a whitish head and a dark eye stripe. Their upper parts are mostly brown with a light blue patch on their wing and a barred tan and black tail. The male laughing kookaburra can easily be distinguished from the female by the blue on his wing feathers and darker blue on his tail feathers. The female on the other hand has a small amount of aqua on her wing feathers but no blue on her tail feathers. Kookaburras occupy woodland areas including forests. Most species of kookaburras tend to live in family units and their laughter serves the same purpose as a great many other bird calls to mark territorial borders and the family often will all join in. They live in the same territory throughout the year and keep the same partner for life. The laughing kookaburra eats a wide variety of small animals such as lizards, insects, worms, snakes or mice and are known to take goldfish out of a garden pond. They typically wait perched on a branch until they see an animal on the ground then fly down and pounce on their prey. They generally breed in unlined tree holes or in excavated holes in termite nests in trees. This pair stole their termite nest from last year's kingfishers and they had to work on opening it out big enough. They worked on their project for over a week. They had to get it just right. and it looks like it was good enough for her. The couple can have a short but a well-earned rest. And there's a couple of inquisitive lorikeets checking out the kookaburra's nest. When they got the nest to their liking, the female laid her eggs. They usually lay three eggs at about two day intervals. they take turns at sitting on the eggs. The parents incubate the eggs for a period of 24 to 26 days. Usually the first egg to be laid in a clutch will be a male and the second will be a female. If the food supply is not adequate, the third egg will be smaller and the chick will also be smaller and at a disadvantage relative to its larger siblings. The chicks will quarrel. The smallest chick may even be killed by its larger siblings. Then the remaining two become more and more demanding, keeping the parents on their toes. Often last year's offspring will assist with the feeding. Often, the parent will call the chicks to tell them food is coming.
but they don't like everything that they're given. I noticed one chip poking its head out of the entrance and looking down. When I investigated, I found one of the remaining two chicks had either fallen or was pushed out of the nest. In any case, it didn't end well. The last remaining chick started to come further out of the nest opening, becoming more and more game all the time. Meanwhile, mum and dad just kept feeding it tirelessly. I noticed they seemed to be teasing the chick and trying to coax it to come out. But they did this for a while and cut back on the feeding. Then, after some coaxing, the chick flew. I went looking for it, and I couldn't find it for a long, long time. Even its family seemed to be looking. Then I heard the family flying around excitedly and calling out. and I spotted it sitting on my back fence. Then the parent came down and offered it food. sat there for a long time, then it eventually flew off into the bush. It will continue to be fed by the group for up to six to ten weeks, 
until it's able to forage independently. I have seen it around a couple of times since. It's come into the backyard once. But I don't want to go too close and frighten it away. So it's just another success story for the kookaburras. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.